Hello everyone, welcome to the Mixed Reality Toolkit tutorial series. Uh, Mixed Reality Toolkit uh, is basically a, a set of uh, features, uh, libraries, and uh, you know tools and uh, scripts and a lot of other things uh, uh, and configurations and everything which is provided by Microsoft to create Mixed Reality experiences using Unity for uh, devices like HoloLens and other virtual reality devices. Uh, and it's always growing and more features are getting added too. Um, and more devices also. Uh, and so over the course of this uh, series, I'll be explaining uh, different features and how we can use these features, uh, you know, mostly from scratch and everything. Um, uh, so we'll have coding exercises and, uh, uh, you know, uh, walk through through existing examples and everything. So uh, in this first course and the first video, uh, I'm going to, uh, we are going to start with uh, uh, the installation and uh, quick setup of the very fundamental and basic setup of the Mixer Reality Toolkit. So you can download the Mixer Reality Toolkit for Unity from uh, the release page of the community uh, in GitHub. And, uh, uh, or you can download it through the code itself and export it as a package yourself. So if you go to the release page, uh, you can see that it is divided into multiple components called uh, foundation, extensions, uh, and uh, tools. And they just released the uh, you know, 2.0 version of the Mixer Reality Toolkit. So here you can also uh, download examples which are actually optional. Um, I, I just uh, did it from directly from the code. Uh, so it doesn't really make any change. So you're free to use it the whichever way you want. Want to uh, to make sure that you have the unity package created and uh, uh, then we can start with the unity project all right uh, now I, we are going to create a new project with the unity hub so uh, i'm going to uh, yeah, use that particular version which is already installed to create a 3D project. Now renaming it to MRTK 101, and click on Create. I'm going to edit out uh, the you know uh, the scripting uh, loading process, and I'll be back once it's loaded. All right, now it's loaded, and uh, you can see uh, this is a standard uh, Unity application. And uh, what we can do is uh, we can import uh, the Unity package right in here, but before uh, which I got already ready. But before that, uh, we have to set a few things, uh, and it's you know important to understand that in the beginning, especially when you are doing this uh, for the first time or something like that. So let's go to the build settings and uh, you know change the project to universal windows platform mode and in the right side options let's select a hololens and for now let's keep all the other options as it is and uh, we'll explore them uh, in future uh, so uh, go ahead and switch the platform and now go to the player uh, settings. In there, uh, you set the uh, important uh, parts of the actual project. For example, uh, the scripting runtime version, the scripting backend or API compatibility, uh, uh, those options actually. So uh, if you want to switch it from IL to CPP backend to .NET uh, uh, version, uh, you can do that. But I, I didn't do it because uh, in future versions of Unity, it's not uh, it's it's going to be deprecated. Um, so that's why uh, I am currently choosing IL to CPP to go with. Um, then uh, going further in the Mixer Reality settings, you can set the uh, Virtual Reality Supported to turn on. Actually, you need to do that to turn on the support. And then uh, you have Depth Format, Enable Depth Buffer, and then uh, Studio Rendering, uh, set it to uh, Single Pass Instanced for performance. And uh, uh, we don't need View Fourier and the remoting for now, at least for this uh, uh, current video. Uh, you, there is another way to set these things, optimize once you have the MRTK toolkit uh, installed. So I can show it to you uh, also uh, shortly. Then um, uh, there is publication settings where you set the capabilities. Again, we will do that uh, shortly. Then uh, next is uh, basically the depth format. We have to set it to 16 bit for performance reasons again. So that's uh, the thing that basically we are going to set right now. And let's close the uh, build settings and go to uh, the project settings.
So here uh, we have to set the quality for the Windows uh, UWP uh, to lowest uh, so that you know uh, the performance is greatly improved with that. Now once you have the quality settings uh, enabled to the lowest and then uh, we might want to go, we have to go to the audio and uh, you know you need to enable the uh, spatializer here so by default it will be none and you need to set it to uh, ms microsoft hrtf spatializer uh, that's one thing you need to do uh, in, order to, in order to enable the uh, spatial audio and then <clears throat> Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, I want uh, you can access the player settings through uh, you know this option also rather than just through the uh, build settings. That's why I left the uh, publish publishing settings before without checking any of them. And now uh, you, you know I'm checking. Uh, I already actually pre-checked the three of them like for the internet client, for internet, for a microphone, for uh, you know speech commands and then uh, spatial perception for the spatial mapping and spatial understanding so if you if you don't care about spatial uh, mapping for your particular app uh, you don't have to use this one uh, but the other uh, two are generally required but again it changes based on what is your app requirement and uh, you know the features that you want supported uh, but these three are generally uh, for our uh, tutorial series I'm going to use these three because we will need uh, these three at least for uh, this particular series now um, uh, so uh, one more thing we need to set is the supported device families make sure you have holographic enabled on that one uh, that's the last piece so uh, once you have all this then it's time to uh, you know, import our uh, unity package for the MRT toolkit now uh, I'm going to import the uh, custom package for the MRTK remember I created it from the github code directly that's why I only have a single package while you will have uh, you know if you are direct, uh, taking from the actual release package you will have it separate uh, but uh, you can have uh, import all of them um, it, it really makes uh, no difference actually I just have all of them in one single package that's all so it's time to uh, import this one I'm going to pause it until it shows the uh, import option all right now uh, we have the uh, the you know the import option for the entire toolkit and here i am going to import pretty much everything except the uh, tests so i'm going to uncheck the tests and uh, i'm going to take everything else including the examples because we'll be running through some of those examples in later videos uh, so we'll be using the same project for our you know uh, other videos also for this particular series now uh, click on import now while importing the package it is going to ask you this question uh, need to apply uh, the special uh, spatial awareness layer so uh, click on apply here so it basically adds a spatial awareness layers into the layers list so I'm going to click on apply and it's going to just uh, load all those um, uh, assets and everything there you are so everything is imported as you can see um, and now it will show some uh, errors in the uh, console but you can safely clear it for now you don't need to worry about it um, now uh, also you can notice that there is a mixer reality toolkit menu option added to unity here so this is where uh, you know we configure the other things and uh, you can also choose to configure the, the the build settings and the player settings and everything that we previously did i just want you to understand what you know uh, the the basic way of doing it so once you do it through here let's say uh, the there are basically three main windows the build window for the build settings the optimize window for all those optimizations we done and then the dependency window is basically used for you know finding the uh, dependency between the assets and the uh, game objects and everything that you have in your uh, project and uh, you know uh, kind of creating like a dependency map so we are not going to use this for now but we are going to explore these two at this point which is important for the setup so if you look at it uh, in the build <clears throat> You can already see that it is reflecting the change we did, uh, you know, as part of the build settings, the hollow lens, and then uh, open player settings. You can open 
through this then deploy options you can set if you have a, uh, a you know a real hololens device uh, you can use this uh, deploy options and then apex build options uh, this is one of the important part as i said if you look at it this is where we set the gaze input capability basically this is basically the eye eye tracking uh, capability of hololens 2 so you need to enable it here and if you are not enabling it here then you need to you can only enable it in the visual studio project once you build the uh, application right so this is another one that you need to do uh, then these are the unity build options uh, and uh, uh, that's that's pretty much it uh, the next one is uh, so we are uh, you just make sure that in the uh, uh, in the apex uh, build options enable the gaze input capability right so that's pretty much it um, now we are going to look into the optimize window and here you can see uh, the settings optimization and since we already did all uh, these things directly uh, th I, this is why I wanted to do it directly so you understand uh, you know the relation between this menu and what we did we already set the depth buffer sharing and the depth buffer format to 16 bit if you look at it from 24 bit uh, and uh, uh, the real time uh, illumination is something we did not set but it is uh, you can see um, you know uh, you if you go to the light settings yeah here you can see that the real-time global illumination is by default disabled uh, when you start the unity project so that's why it is also in green and uh, single pass instance also we set it in our uh, mix xr settings mixed reality if you look at it here um, so this is publications uh, here so if you can if you see we set all these things so if you haven't set it I have, if you had it for 24-bit uh, and uh, you close the tab and uh, you optimize window, actually it will show you like this, a depth buffer format and it will let you change it to 16-bit uh, format. So you can you can actually optimize your project through this option too. So that's, that's you can see it totally changed. So this is one of the, uh, so everything that we pretty much did before, you can actually do it after installing uh, the MRT toolkit, but I did it from scratch the 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 hard way because so that you understand the relationship uh, how things work, right? And then if, uh, you can look at the scene analysis. We don't have anything here at this point, uh, so uh, you know it will provide the prop performance information and everything for the current scene. Uh, shader analysis again, we don't need anything at this point now. We will revisit all these things later. So let's close uh, these tabs. All right. And uh, let's start our project. Now, if you, for that, that by default, we are going to need a Mixed Reality Toolkit. That is the base game object, which I, that is a central point of the Mixed Reality Toolkit. So once you click on uh, add to scene and configure, it is going to add the Mixed Reality Toolkit, the central game object uh, into the scene. And it is going to ask for uh, the default profile that needs to be enabled. Now we have the next video dedicated for profiles. So I'm not going to elaborate much on that. Uh, only uh, I'm going to just say uh, profiles are a way of configuring all the features and uh, you know much more in the for that you need for uh, your application and also to configure how the uh, Mixer Reality Toolkit behaves, uh, you know, within your application. So uh, for now, I'm going to choose the HoloLens 2 configuration profile. So it will set uh, that and uh, you can see this is the profile that you see below. And uh, what you see here is a camera, input boundary, all of them are the core fundamental systems or features uh, feature systems for uh, the entire uh, toolkit uh, so uh, yeah again we will explore this in detail in the next one so for now i'm going to leave it at that um, now we are going to make sure our setup is fine so you can see there's a play space added on top of it and uh, camera moved to uh, the play space and then just the toolkit so i'm going to add a new materials folder here and inside the materials folder i'm going to create a new material 
um, called uh, skin for now and uh, set its color to red all right and then save it and apply it to create a cube okay. sorry cube and then apply my material to the cube and then let's see I am putting it in front of my camera view so if you look at the camera view that's how it is you see right that's a camera preview so you can see that the cube is right in front of me and I'm gonna bring it a bit more closer so you can see my where my gaze is when the application when I run the application now uh, let's uh, for now ignore all these errors and uh, click on play okay once the uh, the play button has started you can see the uh, the the you know the default debugging option is running which will show you the frame rates um, the cpu uh, consumption the memory and everything the default information uh, which is provided by the toolkit and then uh, you can see there are a few additional elements created like the UI rec has camera and uh, diagnostics loaded as that's basically this one uh, and the cursor is also loaded uh, into the scene right uh, now if you click on space you will see there is the hand mesh pointer right so that's basically my right hand uh, for the space and if you press the left shift you can see the left hand pointing right so if you press both you can see my right hand and my left hand both on the scene all right so now when i'm moving my mouse both moves at this point but if you want to keep one static uh, press on t those are the default settings and of course once you uh, know about the profile you will know how to modify these uh, settings and the key bindings so right now my left, even if I, my mouse is moving, the left mo uh, left hand is not moving. And uh, but uh, when I press space, I can keep moving my right uh, hand, or I can emulate my right hand. So this will help you in debugging your application within the editor and simulating these hand movements and the hand gestures and everything. Likewise, you can also simulate the gaze and uh, uh, many other uh, even spatial mapping and everything within the Unity editor itself. Itself. it will fasten your uh, you know uh, development process uh, by a lot rather than deploying every time to an actual uh, device or even to a HoloLens simula simulator itself and testing it out all right so that's uh, basically uh, this uh, this whole video this is what, what basically I wanted to cover the the you know the initial installation and the setup and making sure that everything is working fine so of course you can see that in uh, the console everything is good there are no errors we don't see anything so all is fine so yep that's pretty much that I wanted to cover in this uh, uh, in this particular uh, segment in the first video and uh, from here we will uh, next move on to the profiles and feel free to add your comments and uh, uh, you know uh, any feedback or anything that you have about the content or about the presentation or uh, you know if you want any more additional details if you have any questions regarding this just uh, you know uh, go ahead and add those uh, features I really appreciate it so uh, I'll see you in the next one then. Thank you.